a space tail. Oh yes, it's time that I'll be diving into one of those movies. Just letting you know, I'm about to watch this for the first time, but from the stories I've heard from other people, it does not sound like the kind that people would commonly refer to as, um, good. Not much is known about this strange feature, other than the fact that this is made by the same studio that created the Nutjob movies, and I'm not particularly a fan of those, so that's already a red flag here. Nowadays, however, it has one of those reputations where people have more likely seen a review of it on YouTube instead of the movie itself. Maybe prior to this, you've already watched either Saber Spark or Bob Show talk about it, and how they've made you aware that this movie is, well, um, unique in its own way. For better or for worse. I don't know what I'll be personally expecting from this, but I'm just hoping that the picture is not as disastrous as its performance at the box office. So now that it's my turn to head to the planet of Bana, does this movie actually have that spark that very few were able to discover? Or does that spark feel more like a power outage? Let's find out. The Story as a feature that is set in space where the protagonist is the destined hero to save the galaxy from an evil ruler, many have accused this of being a ripoff of Star Wars A New Hope. And yeah, there is no denying that there are a lot of noticeable similarities with their stories. However, I wouldn't go as far and use that as a reason to call this a flat-out ripoff. Keep in mind that the Chosen One narrative is actually quite commonplace in sci-fi stories, where there are many variations of it in the genre that span across several decades. In fact, before Luke Skywalker, Paul Atreides from Dune was known to be science fiction's signature Chosen One. So, as much as that plotline is probably not the most original to use for a movie like this, I cannot really fault it just for using that alone. Actually, this might sound crazy, but I can see how Spark was able to take that plot and able to create its own thing. I must confess that there is a part of me that does admire how it tries to develop its own sci-fi epic. It's noticeable how it contains plenty of ideas that were meant to be much bigger than just for this picture alone, where the world building is galaxy sized to explore different planets with their own culture and fully establish its own scientific rules and history. Possibly the biggest surprise from this is that this has all the right concepts needed to become the next Star Wars or Dune. You must be the spark of hope for people to believe in. That is your purpose and place in the universe. And yet, there's something that doesn't sound right. As much as it may sound like I'm hyping this up, why doesn't this movie have the same legacy as the greats of the genre? Well, this is where the black hole appears to suck out all the positivity here. As much as it has great materials, the writing has no idea how to use them. Again, it's not the story being technically considered unoriginal that makes it bad. The source to what makes the experience feel awful is found in the execution which you'll see is a recurring issue in this film. Even with original ideas, it doesn't do anything to make the story feel unique or engaging. The storytelling is so flat that it really does feel like the basic cookie-cutter Chosen One narrative where it only moves from one cliched moment to the next with no motivation of its own to show audiences why they're heading towards that direction. Are you going to apologize to the entire universe for handing it over to Zong, are you? Go ahead! I'm sure that'll help! As I was watching this, I tried to figure out why. What is it that caused this bad writing in the first place? It took a while, but I realized that, unlike most other sci-fi stories like this, Spark is a kid's movie. I'm not saying that making a film for children is bad, but this prioritizes above all else to appeal to them and only them. Which is why it really simplified its storytelling to the point where it can feel like it's talking down to its audience and fill the feature with a lot of unnecessary humor that most aren't even funny in the first place. Now would somebody please tell me who I am? Uh, you're the captain? Huh? And what are these? Those are your hands. Smashing. 
it really doesn't help either that the writing is so bad that it cannot get anything right, especially when it comes to the dialogue, which I will get more into later. Seriously, that plays a significant factor to how the movie can feel unpleasant to watch. This movie actually has an idea for a great story, one that could have brought us into an exciting new universe. Too bad that the writing destroyed any chances of it being good. The Animation Sci-fi is a genre that can be a great fit for animation, as the limitless creativity of the medium can conjure up galaxies and universes that can go beyond the realms of imagination. However, it is also a challenge where, as enjoyable as it is to think of ideas for that kind of project, making them look good and believable requires some amazing craftsmanship. In the case of Spark, you can tell that a lot of the creative energy went on to making the planet Bana and what surrounds the planet. Like I said before, the movie does include some great aspects and the animators put in the best work they can to visually bring those ideas to life. Since world building is one of the better things that this movie could do, it does well to present Bana as a large ecosystem with several sectors, especially after it got blown into some parts. From the vibrant village that surrounds the palace that is full of plant life, to the chunk of the planet that is used as a garbage dump where the main characters live, to the deserted planet where the other side of the Kraken Slick leads to. They're a bit more on the generic side, but there was effort to present how the inhabitants are doing their best living in their respective environment. Not to mention how they are capable of showing off some impressive shots to highlight the grand scale of where they are in space. As for the characters, I do question why there are different species to begin with. With the exception of that one scene where we do see different aliens and its unique whale-like interpretation of the Kraken, which is probably the best visual aspect of the feature and does look awesome on its own, the only types of characters featured are mostly monkeys and a few foxes, boars, and roaches. Granted, they are designed pretty well and can make each character look distinguishably different from one another, so this is where the designers aren't given a lot to work with, but they made the most with what they got. Also, the character animation is one of the few things that does redeem how this is a kid's movie. Because it has to take itself less seriously, it does leave room for some of the characters like Spark, Captain, and Zong to be more playful in their movements, and try to add a bit of fun with some more theatrical or slapstick moments. Nothing much. Just finding the Kraken, destroying another planet, and having the rest of the universe bow before me in fear! That's all. But again, this is where the execution comes in to ruin all that hard work and drag this down to become subpar. However, this is not the fault of anyone who worked on this. If I had to point out who's responsible, it's gotta be the technology. Whatever rendering power they use to present the final film is absolutely weak. It doesn't matter how much hard work was put onto all the different elements, and a lot are good by the way, but how the computers they had took all that work and combined them to produce one whole picture ended up making this look like a direct-to-home media film. And keep in mind that this is a 2016 animated film. It can make the effects look cool, but there's no texture, which makes it awkward for a film with anthropomorphic animals. The flow of the movements is not smooth and more janky. And everything, regardless of what it is, looks like it's made of plastic. Not to mention that if the bad writing isn't enough, the directing also resulted in a lot of questionable choices. And the most evident of this is whenever the animation tries to supply what seems to be a bunch of cheap 3D tricks. Did you say cheap 3D tricks? Uh... I'll admit, this movie's got some high ambitions, and there are a few times that it can pay off. 
But this is sadly a case where the team tried to bite off more than they could chew, where they don't have the tools necessary to properly present those concepts. It's got some great ideas for the animation, but the animation itself is not good. The characters. I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the execution did not ruin the characters. The bad news is that they are already bad to begin with. The Chosen One narrative is highly dependent on having likable characters for the audience to follow so that they can be engaged with the adventure and to see the hero ultimately fulfill his destiny. It already failed that mission right when it started because these characters just suck, especially when it comes to its lead, Spark. Before he discovered that his parents were the king and queen of Bana, where he magically becomes more competent and turns into a bland hero, he's just a whiny and annoying little kid. The film tries to explain that he's just a teenager, but that doesn't change that all he does throughout the first half is complain that he's a big boy now and wants to go on adventures, and stupidly takes matters in his own hands, which obviously makes things worse since he never knows what he's doing, and too stubborn to admit it! It's not fair! My throat's sore, I didn't eat breakfast, I have a, uh, got a, uh, okay, you know what? You're cheating, that's what it is! In fact, the movie doesn't do much to make him likable or have him connect with audiences other than the need to see how there's more to life, and then just gives him this great destiny almost like out of coincidence than feeling like he's genuinely worthy of it. The friends that he has aiding him are mostly just one-note comic reliefs who supply weak humor, including Chunk, the tech expert that loves food, Floyd, his cute roach buddy that's always on his side, Banani, the worn-down robot nanny, Captain, the eccentric head of the battlecruiser that often gets electrocuted, and Vix, the only one who isn't trying to be funny that if her tough attitude isn't memorable, then those evident hips will be. I know, I know, but I mean, what else is there to notice when there's no personality to grab my attention? And then there's the villain Zong. The cruel ruler of the planet Bana who wants to conquer the universe by using the power of the Kraken who can literally fart out black holes. I'll say this right now, this guy has got to be the most out of place, over the top, and ridiculous thing in this movie. In fact, I'd even say that he's one of the goofiest villains in an animated film. And honestly, that's what makes him the best thing in Spark. He's just a silly stereotypical villain, and he loves every minute of it, chewing up every scene he's in that results in his moments to actually be funny. You could tell that everyone who worked on this character were having the time of their lives. The writers loved it, the animators loved it, even the voice actor had so much fun playing this bombastic and cartoony bad guy. Voila! Instant Kraken Sticks! It's like having a world-destroying weapon at your fingertips! I'll even add that his strong assistant, Coco, is also funny with her tired reactions to dealing with the little guy's temper. But even with enjoyable villains, that doesn't forgive how, most of the time, we're stuck with these unpleasant characters who were given dialogue that are just downright atrocious. Nothing that they say feels natural where they can often feel too on the nose with what's happening or the jokes can be so bad that they really do take away from the whole experience. And no veteran actors like Patrick Stewart or Susan Sarandon can be able to put a band-aid on this issue. Sure, it's a movie set in a different planet, but seriously, who talks like this? No one's cheating, Spark. I just don't think you're old enough yet. I am a thousand in roach years! Well, I'll keep that in mind when we go to war with the bugs. Keep in mind that these are the characters chosen to save Bonham, not the ones who can save this movie. Honestly, this movie was absolutely painful. Not because it was frustratingly terrible, but because of how it was such a wasted opportunity. Spark a Space Tale could have been a great action-packed sci-fi adventure. It's got some admirably awesome concepts with the world building, with the story, with the animation, and even having a hilarious villain. 
but it was unable to pull it off well and results in an unimpressively weak animated feature. The writing is abysmal, the dialogue is embarrassing, the comedy is awful, the story feels bland, the characters are mostly unappealing, and the animation looks like it's bargain bin quality. It's honestly very hard for me to recommend watching this. There are obviously better options out there that do a greater job at this, like either Star Wars Episode 4 or Denis Villeneuve's Dune, and it's not even bad enough to enjoy the awfulness. This is just watching a great idea that gets thrown away to become something that just sucks. And that's why I'm giving this the Animat Seal of Garbage. I really wanted this to be a good movie. I really do. But I guess that's just not part of its destiny. This is Animat, and I want to start things off by giving out a huge thanks to Peyton Michael, whose amazing support on Patreon allowed him to get a whole bunch of great rewards, including this one, where he got to ask me to review Spark a Space Tale. And yeah, I think the best way to describe this movie is that it sucks. And I don't necessarily just mean that the movie itself sucks, but also the situation that it got itself in. That really sucks. The fact that it got a great idea going for it. It's got this amazing plan to go and produce this awesome sci-fi epic with its own original ideas, but the execution of it really crashed and burned. And it really is unfortunate, and that's the part that really makes it unpleasant. Like, this is the reason why it's just really cringy to watch this, is to see this amazing idea just go to waste. But anyways, I'm pretty much done with that movie, and now it is time that we shall go and move on to the animation hat. And uh, before I pick the next review, I would just like to go and say that if you guys would like to be like Peyton and you want to go and get some amazing rewards, including but not limited to seeing my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and that I would put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. Okay, so... Let's go and pick the next one now. Okay, hold on. Oh man, they're a little tricky to catch, but I did manage to get one. And the next review shall be... Oh, oh yes, oh man. Oh yes. <laughs> we got a fan favorite right over here. Oh, I think uh, we're definitely gonna have a, a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> Mainly because of the fact that this isn't just any ordinary movie. Oh, this is much more than that. This isn't just a movie. Well, how could I say this without revealing too much? Well, it is a, a pretty silly movie, a, a ridiculous movie. I think there's another word for it, but you would probably figure that out. <sighs> Coco should have taken modeling job. 